So welcome ma'am to the Voice of Healthcare third edition of National Diagnostics Forum and Awards. So ma'am we would like to hear your thoughts on what are the most common pre-analytical errors impacting the diagnostics outcomes. Uh, thank you Voice of Healthcare for giving me this opportunity and uh, for giving this question also to me. The pre-analytical errors, uh, we know in the diagnostic industry the patient dissected when it comes to the laboratory perspective it's far from the pre pre analytical side where the doctor uh, writes a test on the prescription to the laboratory when they read it and how they read it to pre analytical cases where we do go for registration of the sample we do go for uh, sample collection also or transportation and the analysis which comes to the laboratory part of it and the post analysis where we do maintain the samples and we do the data storage part of it so all the part uh, right from the analysis to the post data analysis is almost the automation is there and where the chances of errors are very very less. But the pre analytic area and pre pre analytic area is mainly dependent on the human uh, person, the skilled person, the skilled man force also, and it's all the manual part of it. Chances of errors are very very high, and as we see, uh, some of the data reports are around 65 to 70 percent of the errors happens in this pre pre analytic area and pre analytic area, leading to the wrong outcomes of the results in the laboratory. And uh, also, uh, if you talk about the operational cost of the hospital, around 8 to 10 lakh rupees of the operational cost gets wasted when we get our wrong samples and when we do the retesting and we finally give the report, which compromises not only the patient's safety, we lose the trust of the patient, we lose the credibility of the lab as well. So if I talk about the common clinical er errors, so uh, right from the sample labeling, how we understand the prescription. Uh, if the doctor writes a, a prescription of creatinine and if we read it as calcium, we will perform the test of calcium, give the report and the doctor will come back again saying that no, it was not calcium, it was creatinine I was asking for. So then again you do the testing and uh, uh, need to uh, turn around time wastages also, the diagnosis is also not given to the patient. Second most common thing is the labeling of tube where the chances of errors are very very high. The pre analytical errors means you uh, don't barcode the sample, don't name the, mention the name of the patient in the tube, and then follow patient also when comes a second patient. You end up uh, making a same kind of error and uh, the exchange of tubes happens at many a phase. This is the most common second uh, mistake which happens in the pre analytical area. Third part is an important part which is the logistics, where we send the samples and usually they, we have multiple collection centers or we uh, have a facility of home collections as well. But when the sample reaches to the lab, at that turn around time, from sample collection to the uh, reaching the laboratory, is very very crucial. And uh, the transportation within the cities, how the coach end is maintained, if it is not maintained, that is all is an important part of it, which leads to the erratic results. Uh, even during the collection, there are certain steps which needs to be taken care of, like we do uh, tie the tourniquet during the collection. So how much time and the, from the distance where uh, the sample is collected, how far it is uh, tied up also makes a lot of differences in the quotation reading, uh, specifically in the patient. Uh, it can lead to the hemolysis also. So very, very small steps where we can have uh, control over the skill band, power, the training of the team and uh, adopting to a new technologies of collection like painless renal collection and uh, faster transportation time. That can uh, help us in uh, minimizing these errors in the industry. Thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for sharing your thoughts and addressing the key challenges in a very short period of time. In the end, ma'am, we would like to ask your thoughts on the Voice of Healthcare third edition of National Diagnostics Forum and Award. So please share your views on this. So definitely, uh, uh, the third edition of uh, this Voice of Healthcare Diagnostic Innovation and Excellence is a commendable job and uh, very excellently organized uh, this event. And uh, we are talking about many pertinent topics which are relevant to this industry yes. and the need of the hour to be addressed, to be talked about and you are talking, touch basing on all of them, right from the innovations to the challenges which we are facing in the industry and I really congratulate Voice of Healthcare for uh, organizing such a wonderful event. Thank you so much ma'am. Thank you. Cut.